th there are a lot of people out there that, that have said sort of a, a car like this is you know about as real as a unicorn. Well, today you've had a chance to ride a unicorn, you know. So it's 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 real. Just a few years ago, Tesla was a small EV startup in California, but now they're of course a huge disruptive force in the automotive passenger vehicle market. Now with a Tesla Semi in production and uh, with huge plans for the future, it looks like Tesla is also aiming to seriously disrupt and revolutionize the commercial trucking industry as well. As Elon Musk mentioned in Tesla's most recent investors conference call, they're aiming to produce somewhere around 50,000 Tesla semis per year by 2024. And in a relatively small class eight commercial truck market, that could be seriously disruptive. Let's talk about Tesla's entry into the commercial trucking market and how this could affect existing competition. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. As Tesla Roddy recently confirmed, the Tesla Semi has officially received EPA certification, and as Elon Musk recently announced on Twitter, first deliveries will be happening on December 1st, marking the beginning of a new era for Tesla. Now that 50,000 number is the first gold number that I've actually heard about the Tesla Semi. Um, but I think it's very possible that that's just the beginning for Tesla's production of the semi. And I don't believe that's where production will top out. I believe Tesla could produce more than 50,000 in the future. And uh, this could be a huge disruptive force. Even the 50,000 semis could be a huge disruptive force in the class eight trucking industry. For instance, according to a Daimler truck group investor presentation uh, for their full year 2021, they showed here between 2016 and 2021, the average number of trucks sold in North America, class eight trucks, was somewhere a bit over 273,000. During that same period of time in the EU 30, there were somewhere around 293,000 plus heavy duty trucks sold. As you can see, the number of semis being sold per year on average in the USA and also the EU 30, uh, those numbers are actually relatively low, especially when you compare that to the passenger vehicle markets in the EU 30 in the United States, where uh, millions of vehicles are being sold per year. For instance, in the USA, there'll be somewhere around 15 to 16 million uh, passenger vehicles sold in the USA in 2022. So when you look at under 300,000 and you compare that to like 15, 16 million, uh, that's a small number. And the entry of a new competitor that could be selling 50,000 new semis in that market, that could be seriously disruptive. When it comes to the big players in the US commercial trucking manufacturing market and the companies that Tesla will be going against, as you can see, Daimler owned Freightliner in 2021, according to Statista.com, had over 37% market share. Do know that Daimler also owns the Western Star brand, which also held a bit under 3% market share. Other big players are Peterbilt, Kenworth International, Volvo, and Mac. As we examine how Tesla's presence could disrupt this market, let's move beyond 2021 numbers, and let's take that national US average of somewhere around 273,000 semis being sold per year, class eight semis. And as you can see in this chart, I've done some rounding and uh, just did a rough market share example with that 273,000 sales average. Now it's important to note here that Daimler owns the Freightliner and the Western Star brand. Picard owns Peterbilt and Kenworth. Um, and Volvo not only has a uh, semi truck under their own brand name, but they also own the Mac brand. So if you actually consolidate this all together, you're really dealing with four major brands in the class eight commercial trucking industry. If Tesla is indeed able to deliver 50,000 electric semis in 2024, you can see here that that could represent somewhere around an 18% market share. And when you look at how the market share changes for the large companies with Tesla's entry, here are some examples of what this could look like in 2024, assuming Tesla delivers 50,000 semis and the US average sticks to somewhere around 273,000 semis sold in 2024. Um, you can see that Daimler and Picard, Volvo and Navistar 
could see their market share drop a decent amount. So as you can see, Tesla producing 50,000 semis per year could be very disruptive, but this could be just the beginning. I believe it's very possible Tesla could produce quite a few more semis per year in the future beyond 2024. And what about the European market? I definitely see Tesla building semis in Europe in the future and also China in the future, and they could capture a portion of that market as well. Now, I think it's important that I step back right now and kind of look at the reality of the situation. How feasible is it that Tesla could actually be building 50,000 semis per year in 2024? Now, in order to kind of think through this, let's think about ramping up to 50,000 units. That's a small number compared to what Tesla has been able to ramp up Model 3, Model Y uh, production. Tesla is producing right now over a million vehicles per year with their four other vehicles. And that number should increase greatly in the coming years. So ramping up a product to 50,000 units while that's not going to be easy, I'm not going to downplay that there will be issues in the ramp up like there is with any new product. But at the end of the day, ramping up to 50,000 vehicles, uh, 50,000 semis, I don't think will be nearly as difficult as ramping up a more mass produced vehicle. So once again, issues will arise, but this number doesn't seem crazy. Really, the only holdback I could see would be potentially battery supply. Now, of course, we recently learned in Tesla's investors conference call that the current version of the Tesla Semi does not include 4680 batteries. However, I assume that when Tesla is aiming for 50,000 Tesla Semis being built per year in 2024, that that number assumes that 4680 production will be ramped up and that the Semi will include those 4680 batteries at that point. I was able to confirm with one of my sources that the prototype Tesla semis did indeed use 2170 battery cells. And it's assumed because of this that the current version of the Tesla semi that will be delivered to Pepsi uh, on December 1st, it's assumed that that version also includes 2170 battery cells. And this does make a lot of sense since Tesla is building the Tesla semi in a building near their Gigafactory in Nevada. So it would be a short distance to take the batteries from their factory there and put them in the Tesla Semi. That makes the most logistical sense. However, Tesla using 2170 batteries in the Tesla Semi, I believe that's just going to be a stopgap measure until they fully ramp up the 4680 batteries because that's what the initial plan was to have the Tesla Semi include 4680 batteries. After all, the Tesla Semi requires a very large battery pack and it's going to require quite a few batteries to mass produce 50,000 Tesla Semis. While we don't know the battery pack sizes yet, it's assumed that the 500 mile range Tesla Semi will have a battery pack somewhere near 900 kilowatt hours. I also assume that the 300 mile range Tesla Semi will probably have a battery pack somewhere around 500 kilowatt hours. If you assume that this 50,000 number in 2024 has an even breakout between um, the 300 mile range version and the 500 mile range version, this would mean that Tesla would need somewhere around 35 gigawatt hours of batteries to build 50,000 semis. And it could be more than that once again if this skews more towards the long range version of the semi. As I've talked about in past videos, it appears like Tesla is initially building out four production lines at Gigafactory Texas that'll each be able to produce around 25 gigawatt hours of batteries per year for a max initial output of 100 gigawatt hours per year. Of course, Gigafactory Texas is not the only place that Tesla is building and plans to build 4680 batteries, and I believe Gigafactory Texas will expand and Tesla has bigger plans, but Tesla, I believe, is going to need the 4680 battery production to be ramped up pretty good to be able to produce the Tesla Semi and Max volumes. They're going to require quite a few of their other batteries from suppliers, from Panasonic, and uh, even part of the 4680 battery production. That's going to be necessary that this is all ramped up for them to be able to ramp up not only the Tesla Semi, but the Cybertruck and their existing products to the kind of numbers that I believe they hope to put out in the future. Now, I think it's important that I point out right now that Tesla is not the only one working on electric semi trucks. There are several other companies with either products currently on the market or about to hit the market. For instance, when it comes to the existing big companies in the market, Freightliner, Volvo, Kenworth, and Peterbilt each have electric semis in development or production. Then of course you have BYD and Nikola as well. Do let me know if you'd like to see an in-depth comparison of the Tesla semi versus some of the competition, the electric semi competition. Um, as that data comes out, if you'd like to see that, that's a project that I could see myself doing in the future. 
Now, one of the reasons why I believe the Tesla Semi is going to be very disruptive in the market really comes down to the nature of electric semis themselves. They should have a much lower cost of ownership and a lower cost per mile of operation than a traditional diesel semi. For instance, in 2017, when Tesla revealed the Semi, they showed this operating cost comparison of a diesel truck versus the Tesla Semi in the cost per mile. Of course, energy costs have gone up since then. However, if you move to 2022, Tesla currently says on their website, charging with electricity is approximately 2.5 times cheaper per mile than refueling with diesel. Operators can see estimated fuel savings of up to $200,000 within their first three years of ownership. With remote diagnostics, over-the-air software updates, and fewer moving parts to maintain, operators will spend less time at service centers and more time on the road. Obviously, a lot of this savings is dependent on a charging infrastructure that allows for low-cost electricity. So it'll be interesting to see how this actually plays out when these trucks start hitting the road. And we'll talk about charging infrastructure in just a minute, but that could influence this quite a bit, the actual cost of electricity. And it'll, of course, vary in states like California, which have a little bit higher energy cost. And it could be lower in some states that have lower energy cost. Uh, but nonetheless, it seems obvious that electric semi trucks um, will cost less per mile than diesel trucks, definitely on the fuel side. But there is the question, what about replacing the battery? How long will these batteries last in the Tesla Semi and in an electric Semi? And could that negate the fuel cost savings? After all, having to replace a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's not going to be cheap. Now, as a benchmark, based on my research, it appears like the typical diesel Semi is designed to last somewhere around 750,000 miles or more. So obviously when a company is designing an electric semi truck, they have to keep these things in mind. They have to keep in mind that the average truck is going to be driving a lot more miles than a passenger vehicle. And on top of that, you don't want to negate all the fuel savings costs by having to replace really expensive batteries and drivetrain components. Now to add a bit of insight into this conversation, someone recently emailed me from the heavy duty industry and they mentioned that generally speaking, um, for a heavy duty truck, the battery requirements are for that battery pack to be able to go somewhere around 3,500 cycles. They mentioned several ways to increase cycle life, for instance, using an NMC 622 cathode instead of an NMC 811. And also, for instance, this is not something they mentioned, but other companies have decided to go with a lithium iron phosphate based battery pack for heavy duty applications due to the large amount of cycle life that you get from these battery packs. Companies can also add a number of electrolyte additives, use single crystal active materials for their cathodes, and even do an additional coating process. But they also mention that making these changes results in a lower energy density in favor of a long cycle life. Now, of course, the question is, it's assumed that Tesla is using 2170 batteries in the current version of the Tesla Semi, as I mentioned earlier. But is Tesla using the same exact chemistry and the same exact battery cells as are found in, say, the Tesla Model Y? Or have they made a few tweaks to these battery cells? Now, when it comes to the battery warranty that Tesla currently offers for their 2170 equipped vehicles, for instance, with the long range versions of the Model 3 and the Model Y, Tesla offers an eight year, 120,000 mile battery warranty with a guaranteed 70% retention of battery capacity. Also, something else that I've mentioned in the past, Elon Musk tweeted out in 2019 that the Model 3 drive unit and body is designed like a commercial truck for a million mile life. And then he also mentioned that current battery modules should last 300,000 to 500,000 miles or 1500 cycles. When it comes to the drivetrain of the Tesla Semi, I assume that they still are using um, these Model 3, Model Y motors, four of these for the Tesla Semi. So that's designed for very long million mile life. So check there, that can last uh, long enough for a Tesla Semi. Now when it comes to the battery pack, if Tesla has not made any changes to the 2170 cells that they use in the Tesla Semi, the same ones that they use in the long range Model 3 and the Model Y, and if that is good for 1500 cycles, if you multiply that by 500 miles of range, that would be a max of 750,000 miles of design use. However, the reality of it is, is it's not that clean in real life because you may charge that vehicle a few times and not go the full 500 miles of range. So really the question is, is 1500 cycles enough for a commercial truck? I really don't know the answer on that. 
But I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little Jeff Don magic that Tesla is employing for these 2170 batteries. And I wouldn't be surprised if they tweaked these 2170 batteries just a bit to make them longer lasting for this Tesla semi application. Now, this is something that I talked about in the past, and I'll link to this full video down below. But Jeff Don has a research contract with Tesla. And one of Jeff Don's main focuses is improving the lifetime of lithium ion batteries. In a research paper that he put out that I recently covered, he mentioned a battery that could last up to 100 years of use. And this battery had a single crystal cathode, an NMC 532 cathode. It had a lower operating voltage than traditional NMC batteries. It used several electrolyte additives. And according to his test, it was able to maintain a 95% capacity retention after six months of continuous testing. Based on this research paper, it appears like Jeff Don and his research team are onto something here, and Tesla could be employing some of this technology in these batteries that they're using for the Tesla Semi. Who knows? I don't know for sure, but I think it's definitely a possibility. Now, I know some of you might be saying right now, what about the charging infrastructure for these heavy duty trucks? And that's a good question because as it sits right now, there's really not much of a charging infrastructure for these heavy duty trucks to make them really very practical for long haul applications. However, I believe Tesla will install quite a few mega chargers in 2023 and 2024 as they start ramping up production of the Tesla Semi. And remember, Tesla currently has the largest charging network in the world, and I don't doubt that they can build quickly out the infrastructure needed to support these trucks. So really to wrap this up, if Tesla is indeed able to ramp up 4680 battery production uh, to a good pace in 2023 into 2024, um, I believe that 50,000 semis being produced by Tesla in 2024, that seems very possible. Of course, we don't know what the future holds, but that number doesn't seem too crazy. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how Tesla's entry into the commercial trucking market is going to shake up the existing competition. But at the end of the day, it's only going to push the market forward. And I believe it's forcing more of these companies to innovate. And uh, companies that probably would not be working on electric trucks right now are in the process of building and will soon be selling electric trucks as well as we mentioned earlier. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also, if you currently work in the trucking industry, the commercial trucking industry, whether that's manufacturing or if you own a fleet of trucks or if you actually drive a truck yourself and you want to share your opinion with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. I also want to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.